And whether you're a guy in a cape. Was that five seconds already? Yeah, it was. Rogues who are sneaky. Join Chris and Roger. As we entertain the geeky. Guys, what's going on? You know, my energy is a little bit down now. Yeah. A little down. After some technical <laughs> difficulties, you uh, we reset though and everything's looking great now. So All right, go. Today, today, we are at the wonderful North Central Hobbies, and uh, we've got Bill, one of the owners here, um, who's been in the industry for, uh, you know... Longer than we've been alive. A little bit. Oh, yeah, I'm throwing that out oh, there. Oh, yeah, you just had to throw that in there, didn't you? I had to throw the age in any time I can, Grandpa. Let's go. Just remember, you used to work for me. I did. This was my first job. I know. Like We've talked about it. Like, yeah, like, up the street was my first well, job. Let me put it this way. You got a paycheck. I can't say you actually work. You know, you say that, Bill. I busted my ass here, and I remember, I remember certain people, Bruce included, saying that was one of the best decisions you ever made. You busted your ass to get here, and then once you got here, you played around, and you got your then girlfriend at the whoa, time whoa, hold on. to do the work for you. That is not accurate at all. In fact, you tried to hire her before you hired me. No, actually, I didn't. In my in my memory, you did. Well, your memory's faulty. <laughs> My memory, that's exactly <laughs> how it went down. And then I helped rehab this building. That you did. And I busted my ass doing that. That you did. And me and Dennis had and a good time. And you also busted the pipes. I, no, that was Paul. I, You're, I'm sorry, you are correct. I, I cut the Paul. board. Yep. I cut the board. You are correct. That was my fault. I do Paul apologize. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's right. Compare me to but Paul. But we had a lot of fun. It was. It was a good job. Now I'm up here on Thursday nights running D&D. That's going well. Uh, special events are hosted here once a year. Well, yeah, but yeah. that's an invite thing. I mean, thing. these guys don't need to know Yeah, they don't need to know we about We talk Christmas about it either way. That's an invite thing. So you, you've owned it, you, you owned it since 99. I know. Uh, and before that, you worked here in 85. Yes. How has the store, not, not, not really, like the store's vision changed since you've owned it? Or since you've started here? Oh, well, I mean, the vision has changed only because to try and keep up with the times, you know, because the market has really changed. Such as? I mean, I look around, I still see models and RC cars and and the, and the normal stuff that you would expect to see in an old hobby shop. Correct. However, uh, 30 years ago, uh, you'd have a lot of new model cars uh, that would mirror the car manufacturers coming out every year. So... You would have those coming out. They don't do that anymore. So now they just rehash mostly all the old kits. Really? So that's one change. Uh, one advantage is they've cleaned up the molds, added more detail to a lot of them. Um, also, the price is, you know, more than quadrupled since in 30 years. But th th doesn't that just keep up with inflation? I mean... To some extent. Um, however, there are some of the model manufacturers that uh, think they can get a premium price for their stuff. So, as an example, um, you know, seven years ago, there was a line of models that we carried that were average $15. Okay. Now those same kits, no changes by this particular manufacturer, are now 45 to sixty dollars. That's a that's a video game. Exactly. Is it? Uh, yeah, that's that's sixty bucks, Chris. What? That's a what, lot. Okay. Well, are you are you willing to throw them under the bus? Because <laughs> now we want to know. Hold on. Do you still Is carry it Games them? Workshop? No, no. Okay. No. Um, oh, Games Workshop's all. Games Workshop's what started this. Not, yeah. <laughs> games Workshop's what started this business <laughs> model. <laughs> and actually, Games Workshop is something we won't be carrying after the end of the month. Well, yeah. Are you ditching? So, are you ditching the paint and everything? Or everything? Really? Yep. It's too expensive. Well, no, it's pricey for sure. It, it's pricey, um, and there's we don't have a lot of people in this area that do it, or if they do, they don't come in here. Well, no, but again, I mean, you're the model store. Yes. But how many? How long does it take to put a model together? Like it, it depends on the model, um, and it depends on the skill level of the uh, modeler doing it. Let's say average. Let's average. average. The average person will spend eight to ten hours building a model. Chris, how long does it take to beat a video game? It depends on the game. Say single player mode, not multiplayer, just single player, normal games. It now. Depends on the game. Eight to ten hours, probably. So you're still getting eight to ten hours of entertainment for the same price if you buy the sixty dollar model. But you could get a fifteen dollar model and and be just as happy. You can get a fifteen dollar model. And if you've been a if you're an experienced modeler, well, then you can uh, add detail to it and drag it out. Obviously, the longer you drag it out, the more value you get for your hourly entertainment. 
See, for us, like, like here at Entertainment Geeky, our big thing is, is it worth the money versus time? Which is why magic is kind of wane, because it's, 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 it's a time investment where I'm always spending money. But video games and stuff like that, it's, I buy a video game, I have 15 hours of entertainment. That's worth 60 bucks. I mean, depending on the game, too, because certain games, like, Fortnite's killing it right now, and that's free for a lot of people. They've not, really just spent money on skins. Me. Not for me, it's not. Anywho, but, so you're, but when you're done with the video game, you have nothing to show for it. Okay. Like, you're done. I beat a game. What did he do? I beat Mario when I was three. I Bragging rights. Exactly. But when you do a model, you have... Your a trophy. Job, you, 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 you have something to show. You get to put it on a shelf? Yeah. What's or you better? can hang it, or you can give it as a gift. Do so, people yeah. really give away models as a gift? Sometimes, yeah. Is that a thing? I yeah. painted the fuck out of this Mustang, and Just now it's you. yours. <laughs> I mean, look, I put your name on the license plate. They do that, right? I love yes. Custom license plates? Custom license plates, sure. Custom anything. License plate. And custom decals. Now, hold on. Let me ask you this, because there's model cars, there's model planes, there's model boats. Which one has changed the most throughout the years? Hmm. Out of the three, I would say aircraft. Really? Yeah. Because Why? the model manufacturers have really started adding a lot of detail on the aircraft. But to show the level of intelligence of some of these people that design these models, you take uh, an aircraft model and they will add so much detail to the cockpit. I mean, they'll brag that you can read what's on the dial. But, but yet, when you put the model together, you can't see it. I'd say you can't. Unless it's, what about the ones that pop open? Now? Even when they're, they, even with the uh, canopy open or off, it's, I mean, if you want to get down with a magnifying glass and a flashlight, okay. But my thought on that is, who cares? So you're spending more money for something you can't see. Correct. Now, if you were to put models together, keep in mind, guys, we're going to talk more than just models, because there's a whole bunch to get into. But if you're putting models together, which model would you do? Because I know which one I would do. You mean one in particular? Yeah, you had one kit, that's the kit you were going to put together. Well, that it has, well, I'd have to go with my favorite, which would be the Ravel Boeing 747. Chris? If I had to pick a, a car or a plane or... A model. Any model? Any model. I'd paint a mini. Fair enough. What about the big, like, uh, like Batman over there? I would do... Uh, I actually, I would seen recently that they do Transformers models, and I would absolutely do a Transformers model. Do they transform? Yes. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, they're pretty rad. For me, it's it's the Enterprise D. But that kit has not changed since 92. 88. Is it the same kit in 88? Same kit in 88. Still that stupid saucer. Hanging right above your head over there. Yeah. That's the one. I've done like four of those things. Now, mine never looked that good. And I never get the saucer to stay. It always, like <laughs> it always falls off and it's stupid. All right, so we've done models. RC. Now, that's got to be one that's actually changed a lot. And that ha Well, on one hand, it has changed. On another hand, it has not. I mean, the basics stay the same. But what has actually changed has been the technology. Does it get more difficult? Uh, in some cases, uh, a lot of cases, it's easier. Um, Fifteen years ago, if you wanted power and speed, you needed a nitro. But now electric? Now the electrics. Uh, battery technology, motor technology... Uh, the electrics are just blowing the nitros totally off the track. So what's the, I don't want to say top speed because of modification, but average, like, if you wanted to get, if you wanted to go speed, what would you expect to get out of an electric versus a nitro now? Uh, if you use a lithium polymer battery and a brushless system, which uh, you can buy the vehicles with a brushless system in them, throw in a LiPo battery, uh, you can expect to do over 70 miles an hour. Good God. And what's that scale? One-tenth. That's shit. That's, that's bad. That's fucking fast. Like 70 miles an hour? My Kia doesn't go 70 yeah. miles an hour. <laughs> okay. What about Nitro? Because when I was working here, Nitro was 35, 40, and then the Fortech was maybe 60 if you were flat surfaced. And that's pretty much staying about the same. So why do Nitro anymore? Some people, they like to tinker. They like to work on them. Because with Nitros, you work on them as much, if not more, than you actually run them. That's true. Because the, the electrics are just, you can't say they're maintenance free, but they don't take nearly uh, the effort. You charge up your batteries, put them in, and off you go. Nice. I actually, I had a, uh, I had somebody ask where to buy RC cars around here recently, and I was like, oh, you should go to North Central. They actually carry that there. 
Uh, Julie asked where it was. It, it was actually a her, believe it or not. I think she was looking for uh, her kid. Because she asked, uh, she called Miniature Market asking for it. Uh, and I was like, you were a far cry from what you're looking for. <laughs> like, uh, are you willing to like, go to Overland? Like, like, like that, that, that is odd. Okay, hold on. Now, let, 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 fuck it, let's do it. The different customers that walk into a hobby shop versus game store. What do you get? Like, like, what do you get as far as like a hobby, like a hobby enthusiast? Because we'll talk all day about the annoying game customers we get. Keep well, in mind, no one comes into the store is going to listen to this show, so you're good. <laughs> you're oh, good. even if they do, that's okay. You know. Um, well, you know, most of our customers come in; they have a specific thing in mind, so we're a destination store. Um, <clears throat> typically, browsers do not buy anything. Uh, if they do buy something, it'll be, oh, you have you carry paints. I'll buy a jar of paint to touch up my picture frame. It's the pity buy. Yes. That pity, oh, basically. look at the cute little store. And I yes. gotta give you three dollars because I soaked up your air. So everybody else typically comes for a specific reason. Um, you know, most of our customer base are really good people. Uh, they're understanding that we are a smaller shop than uh, any of the other hobby shops in the St. Louis area. Well, how many, because I know two off the top of my head, but really number-wise, how many other stores like this? Uh, All around general hobby shops, there's only four of us, to my knowledge, in the St. Louis area. Schaefer's, Mark Twain, North Central. Checkered Flag. Where's Checkered Flag at? They're down south. I couldn't tell you. They've moved like ten times in the past eight years. So I'm exaggerating a bit, but I still don't. And the small, like, like, the traditional hobby shop, and I keep using that word traditional, because this, when when, when you were a kid growing up, you thought of hobby shops, and it was the models, the RCs, the, the trains, the slot cars, all of that stuff. You have more competition than the comic shops do. When you stop, th- like, comic slash games. Sure, Walmart carries magic now, but there's not a Hobby Lobby or a Michaels or even Walmart that, that is com- competing with the, the smaller comic slash game stores. Right. So how does, how did that impact the industry, like, it, as a whole? It did um, for a number of years, but unfortunately, Walmart almost ran some of the manufacturers that we carry out of business. Such as? Estes Rockets is one of them. Really? Um, Walmart started carrying Estes Rockets. Um, of course, they, when they the first year they carried them, they were you know, within 25, 50 cents of what all the hobby shops carry. Then the next year, they were lower. Then the year after that, uh, Walmart wanted them all in nice, fancy, pretty boxes instead of the bags. Which cost more. Which cost more, but they wanted to pay less. And so after a number of years, Estes had to make a decision. Did they want to continue selling to Walmart or did they want to cut back selling to Walmart and focus more on the hobby shops? Could you imagine being in those shoes, Chris? Well, like Walmart is I can, Walmart. I can imagine having Walmart say, hey, we're going to buy 15 million units from you. Mm-hmm. And that oh shit moment where you're like fuck i'm about to sell 15 million units and then you have the that that other thing that hits you well okay now my cost per unit goes up an extra three dollars because i have to put it in this fancy box now that i was not using before but i'm still selling 15 million units yeah but you might not have the profit there at this point yeah and no, they, so these, they don't, don't. these i mean these don't cost dick to make dude it's a it's a cardboard tube and a hollow plastic top that goes there's up not, really high there's not shit there so their their cost to make that particular item that they're charging 15 20 bucks for is that mm-hmm. okay yeah, average about so 5 bucks it not probably not even I would say about five I I I would be willing to bet if they outsource that which I know they do um, it, it probably costs them a dollar or less per unit 5 bucks no, think, no not that much it's a dollar or less dude but there is a backstory that people don't know as to why the rockets are so expensive and why some of the other items are more expensive well, now we got to know. Okay. Uh, and that has to come down to they have to comply with government standards. Ooh, <laughs> hold on. So. Hold on. What? Hold on. Government standards with rockets? Model rockets? Because it's classified as a toy. Right. Uh, they, The plastics that are used, any paints that are used, everything has to conform to where if a kid gets hold of it and puts it in their mouth, it's safe. It's still gunpowder. Like I want to point that out, these engines are gunpowder. Yeah. Yeah. 
That doesn't make sense. But you fire it with a double A battery, so it's safe. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the one thing that got Estes uh, the most, uh, that cost them the most money, is on their con- uh, launch controllers. They have a, a light on there for arming. So you press and hold the uh, arm button, the light comes on, you know you're ready to launch. The light bulb, the filament in the light bulb did not comply. Estes had to yank out every light bulb out of every controller and replace it with a compliant bulb. Okay. Uh, And I helped do it. First off, my my question is this. Uh, How old how old before you stop putting things in your mouth? Chris, when did you stop putting things in your mouth? Last week? I didn't. Okay. (laughs) Things are delicious. So but at what age do you go, okay, I'm not going to put this thing that's not supposed to go in my mouth in my mouth? Well, I, Four or five? Maybe so, six, seven? Okay. Average, yeah. So, yeah. No, hold on. I got, no, I, I'm, I'm going I'm, somewhere. I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere. I'm kids, though, so I can actually answer this. Yeah, your kids, from an educated your kids place. are different, though. Your kids are different. They're not normal kids. Why is that? They're spider man Whatever. All right. You back yourself into a corner there. So we'll six later. or seven. Yeah, we can fight later. <laughs> so six or seven is when you stop putting things in your mouth. Age of rockets... Nine up. Okay. That shouldn't be a problem to begin with. Well, it shouldn't be a problem anyway, because in order to get to the filament, the filament, you got to break the glass. The glass. Too. So you have to like munch. You would have to literally bite down. And I guarantee you that, that crap that they're talking about is in the light bulbs I'll that we used you to have in the house. motherfucker did it. Someone had to have. <laughs> What's the story behind there? Someone did it, right? Uh, that I haven't seen. All right. So, but I'm not saying I they didn't. Down. That's, that's how they knew it. They were like, this filament's not safe. We ate one yesterday. We fucking know. Because you know the guys that work for the government are sitting there chewing on light bulbs, and they're like, is this one good? No. It's the only no, thing that makes sense now. Not good. And, no. then, and then when they start spazzing out, they just call their attorney. So what is cha- like what has changed as far as trends go? Because in my mind, it like for a while it was RC, our models, our rockets, or... Like, what's the what's the trend now for the, for the hobby stores? Well, it's... Tastes change, so I mean, you have your different times where models will be more popular than radio control and rockets. I mean, they all come and they all come and go, ebbs and flows. Yes, you got it. Uh, but the actual trend is instead of building it yourself, more and more things are getting where you pull it out of the package and you do it. What do you mean? Ready to fly, ready to run. So no break-in period, no. No, actually building. Really? Mm-hmm. To me, that's like the whole point of, uh, of, of is working. In that's doing. the point of a hobby. Right. Yes. Like, like even, I did this myself. Yeah, even like mm-hmm. our our normal hobbies, you know, building decks, making characters, doing those things. We're getting hands on there. And the idea of that would be like playing D&D with nothing but pre-gen characters. That suck. Mm-hmm. Or you guys playing magic by just being able to buy whatever particular deck you wanted already done. Where you open it up and you play. They're called net deckers and they, they already exist. Well, but, it, it, not, not just net deckers, but you do have the challenger decks that Yeah, but are those there. aren't... See, yeah. There's a little bit, so I would get... To, in my mind, challenger decks would be like snap type, snap type models. Like pretty much, it's you just kind of snap it together, you're good it's to go. It's a ready built deck with a sideboard. Yeah, but it's not good. It, it, some of them are competitive. They're not. No, you will not go take that to a Grand Prix. No, event. I mean, you're not going to win a Grand yeah, okay, Prix then. with it. But you're so, talking yeah. to somebody that's got a $12,000 deck versus a guy that's got a fucking $30 deck. So. Money doesn't matter when it comes to magic. Does money what matter in this hobby? What do you live in? To most people, yes. There are a few where it doesn't. Such as? Uh, someone Once in a while, someone will come in. They'll see something in a, online, in a magazine, on TV. I want that. Try to explain to them, have you ever done it before? No. Well, that's not what you want. It'd be like putting a uh, 16-year-old brand new driver in a uh, Formula One car. It's just something you don't do. But there's some of these people that do. And then they get it, and they go out and trash it. And then they bring it back and want their money back because it broke. Well, don't sell broke stuff. Well... If they weren't the dumbasses for running there we into go. a brick Effective wall at driver, 70 miles an there hour. There we go. Now the real Bill's here. He said dumbass. It's time to go. All right. Let's do this. All right. the, the big thing that has changed here since I've been coming here slash working here is slot cars. You forgot about air raids. When I was here, there was no slot cars. Like, we would order stuff on Christmas, sell the little mm. starter sets, and that'd be it. Correct. But you've built this whole community around slot car racing. Yes. How did that, first off, how did you and Dennis come up with that idea? 
Well, that was back when um, the market and everything crashed and uh, the housing industry and everything, uh, everybody was hurting and we knew we needed to do something to keep the store going that was a service as opposed to a product. Okay. And we already had a fairly decent inventory of the slot cars and we're running the Carrera brand slot cars, uh, more specifically digital so the digital, we can have up to six racers on the two lanes, change lanes at the lanes change sections, program the cars for speed, brake. Uh, we can even do fuel races where you have to pull into the pit to fuel what? up. That's fucking awesome. Like, like, like the Daytona 500 here. You got it. All right. So how long did it, like, like I've been up here on a Friday night, and it, it has been packed. Mm-hmm. Like, there's people everywhere doing slot car races well, like when you see this track though we'll post a picture of this track because also it's fucking impressive yeah no the pat and they change they keep the track changed what every three months four months every eight weeks that's so that's even that's two months I've, I've also heard stories and we can get into this later about how you've done things that the manufacturers said would be impossible with the track that is correct i love yeah. it and there's a couple of things that we have done they took pictures of now they offer in their catalog for sale really <laughs> because they didn't weren't they didn't think it could be done. That's how, amazing. How long did it take to take off, though? I mean, was it like an instant? Like th- th- It pretty much was instant. When we first set up, we invested about $1,800. Okay. Which was about our last $1,750. All right. So, you <laughs> so we really took change. a chance. Yeah. However, I was being realistic. I was hoping that if we could have gotten our money back in nine months to a year, I would have been satisfied. Okay. Three months later, we had our money back and then some. Fucking well, right. Yeah, no, up here on a Friday, like I said, and it's it is it's a party. It's not just people racing. Like you got you got people just hanging out, talking. They get their names called. They go race. They just go back. They're all tinkering. Well, that I think that's like a testament to just being adaptive in the hobby industry, and you have to because, like we were talking about earlier, there are ebbs and flows, and you're going to have times where. Uh, you guys used to carry magic and where that was probably lucrative for a time. Not and then really it got here. to a point. Well, I, <laughs> Not really here. I was here for that one. <laughs> but then, then you have other times where it's like, all right, we're just literally shelling out money to keep this product here. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you found this, this niche uh, that so perfectly fits your well, business model is and amazing. And it's been steady for nine years. That's incredible. So uh, a which, decade. You're going to do something much, special yes. for the 10-year anniversary? Uh, we'll come up with something. Like, that's, that's That'll impressive. be next year. Next year. Like, no, so, but you're the only one in St. Louis that's doing that. Because I remember being a kid, there used to be a store that... We're the only ones commercially. Okay. There are uh, private tracks around, but they are not digital. What are, oh, okay, so they're the old-fashioned, like you used to get when you were a kid around yes, the Christmas Yes, and they're tree. analog tracks. Okay. Although they are different scales, you know, um, but uh, we run the uh, 30-second scale. Now, uh, something that I want to know, because it's been a minute, is Pine Car Derby still a thing for the Boy Scouts when they do it? It is. Uh, in this area, it's not as popular. Okay. Um, you know, quite frankly, um, people don't want to spend the money on it. You get a free box. Yeah, and uh, but they complain about having to buy the paint and buy this other stuff for it. And, people complain a lot, Chris. And quite frankly, in our area, I think it cuts into the parents' beer, cigarette, and lottery ticket money. That paints a yes, wonderful I picture. Said it. Damn. <laughs> Fuck you, parents. Um, you and your ligate smokes and your natty light lights. beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Bill just played the best picture for the area we're in. Yeah, that was you know, Well, whoever shit. said Texas was a whole other country has never been to Overland. I mean, that's true. I mean, yeah. Now hold on, all right. We're gonna we're gonna switch topics, not switch topics, but change gears a little, little bit. A little bit, because there's also other things that North Central does that I don't. When 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 I was talking about opening in the store back in the day, there was a lot of things I took from you and Dennis, not in the what to carry, how to run a store thing, but the how to ingrain yourself in the community. There's a lot of things you guys do as store owners for Overland, the, the city that, that that you operate in and live in, that that goes well beyond what a normal shop would do yes like you just like put together this whole fishing derby yes for overland you do the hay ride um you when you when they have a lion's fair you guys are down there like you you close the store down yes which, which in effect means you're not making money that day to contribute to the community that's correct why why not you're closed on a saturday i mean that's 
business tax sense. Break. Tax break? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no tax break there either. Oh, shit. Um, well, because, yes, we're in business to make money, which we really don't. Uh, but you know what? Sometimes you got to step back, look past the dollar right in front of you, and do what you can to help out the community. And if you can come up with something like we started the fishing derby with one of the guys from the city of Overland. His name is Chuck Boone. Uh, he had always wanted to do a, a kid's fishing derby and never could get it to go anywhere. Well, then enter Dennis and I, two loud mouths. You know, we open up our mouths and push, and next thing you know, we have a fishing derby, and we just had our 13th one yesterday. So it's 13 years of how's, the storming post. How's the turnout to you? Uh, we average between 100 to 130 kids Holy every year. Holy shit. And like, this is the lake where I got married, Chris. Yeah. So it's that small little lake. It's not like this is a lake that that that. So people are basically shoulder to shoulder on this tiny pond. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And uh, we get a lot of support from the community. Uh, we uh, solicit donations from other business owners. Um, they ask, "Oh, what levels do you do?" You know, I can't afford a five hundred dollar level. Yeah, neither can we. Whatever you want to donate. If you want to donate five bucks, ten bucks, twenty, I don't care. And then we uh, have T-shirts made. Their name goes on the back of the shirts, and then we also have a sign made that's posted the day of the derby. That's awesome. So, yeah, that was one of the things I took out. What was if I was to ever open the store, was ingrain yourself in the community because mm-hmm. the community will back you. And that's one thing you guys actually do really well. And I don't know if you get a thank you from Overland, but I saw the pictures yesterday on Facebook. Uh, I, I know the hayride. I know all the hard work you guys do that's outside of this. And it's not like you're out there saying, come shop at North Central. Here, look at what we do. Look at all these models and RC cars and all that good shit that we have. It's, hey, we're part of the community. We've been in the community for 30 plus years. We're giving something back. We want it to, we want to keep the tradition of like the hometown, uh, uh, yeah, hometown. I guess that's the best way to put it. Even though your parents spend all your money on cigarettes, beer, and uh, lottery tickets. And you said you hope that Dennis and I get a thanks. Well, several two years ago, uh, this well, about four years ago, the city of Overland started uh, Citizens of the Year. Okay. And they wanted Dennis and I to be Citizens of the Year, but they didn't know which one of us to pick. <laughs> so two years ago, they came up with business citizens of the year oh that's awesome to where if you are resident and you own a business so that is separate from the citizen of the year okay we were the very first it was actually developed so we both could get the business citizen of the year award well that's That's awesome and that's from the uh, city and that's from the local overland business association uh the different committees did through you, the city. Did you tell them not to charge you taxes anymore? Because I, I'd have been like, we're, we're tax free, right? <laughs> For like at least a year, no taxes. Uh, I like wish it worked that way. <laughs> I mean, I'll pay my state and federal, but none to you, right? We're good. We're a nonprofit. Yeah, non- <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you got that right. That's a hobby that's, shop. Yeah, you know? we're a hobby shop. We're probably the poorest business in Overland. Well, but... about, there we go. Now, a little bit to that. I mean, you, you, you have seen the boom, the bust, the boom, the bust. Mm-hmm. Uh, of, uh, of this industry more than once. Yes. Com- Car- Carmen, Carmen. Carmen and Tom had it before you in the 80s, and it was booming, and then it dried up, and yes. then it boomed again, and now in the middle of a down down spot mm-hmm. here. And it's it, it's it's odd to me that, like, like our hobby, what mine and Chris consider to be our thing, is booming right now. You know, oh, comics, man, yeah. games, all that stuff is just booming to where there's, to where it's actually oversaturated here, but these small type stores where, I remember, you know, being st- doing stuff with your dad or your mom or your grandparents, the models, all that stuff is is kind of shrinking. Do you see, honestly, see a way to for the industry, not not just the store, but the industry to pull out of it? Quite frankly, no, uh, because the younger ones coming up aren't interested in this. All they're interested in is looking at their phone or messing with their hands with their uh, video game controllers. So, is there a way to stop that? Like, if you were if you were in charge of Rebel. How would you, how would you adjust? Market? Yeah, how would you adjust to the time? One thing um, I would do, which uh, Crayola did, uh, which I really thought was a cool idea, they came out with a, a coloring book with special crayons. You color them up, download the app on your phone, take a picture of your uh, your artwork, yeah. and 
it animated it on your phone or on your tablet or your computer. That's did you? Yeah. Did that you know this? was totally no, I didn't know this. cool. Where the hell is that at? <laughs> yeah, you, you you got millions of dollars for fucking development. I'll, I'll, I'll go. I will buy a coloring right book now. right now. No, so, so 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 something like that. Take the traditional model, then develop like an app to where you, you could do your it. own video game you could do your own movie scene using your model so adjust adjust for so basically technology. yeah you take all this time you build this model and then mm-hmm. you get to you get to you're the only one with it too instead Drive of putting around. all the money and technology into the model itself because i mean face it there's really only so much detail that you're gonna see anyway we you talked know, about that gives a shit about because part of it's just can you paint it to look good right so Invest in technology to bring it into the 21st century and beyond. So why aren't they doing it? I'm just a dumb little hobby shop owner. So well, what no, do but, I know? But yeah, I mean that's fair. <laughs> but you, you, so you also came up with this brilliant marketing scheme to pull yourself out of the, basically the 2008 market mm-hmm. crash, and it was oh we'll just we'll fucking play the slot cards. We've got this. We'll take our last couple of bucks, and you were right. We uh, took a chance. We didn't know. And that's but awesome. It worked. So, I mean, well, obviously, you've you've got some kind of feel for how you know how the market's going to fluctuate and how this should work. Um, and I think that's that's solid. So I think asking somebody like you with a little bit of know how and it's a fair that's a fair thing to do. Well, yeah, no, and, and here here's a better question. I know with like like for for our side, and it, in my mind, I've always wanted to see an all inclusive, like an all in one store with everything. You know, comics, games, hobbies, like the all-inclusive store. That, to me, is like heaven. Because as much as I don't do a lot with this hobby, I grew up... I just touched my mic. I grew up doing this stuff. Even before I started working working here and knowing you and Dennis, you know, I remember being a kid with my dad doing police cars and doing all that stuff. Uh, where was I going with this? I had a whole wonderful I thought. I'm just thinking of the slot track right now. Yeah, what, what do you think is the... On the horizon, because oh, that's what it was. We have conven- like we have manufacturer. They have conventions. They have manufacturing things where they talk about products coming out in the next year, and they mm-hmm. they talk about the future of five, ten years down the road in the industry. We have those two, and and w- w- okay, and we know what's going in our ways. D and D six editions coming, more magic. They're integrating more of the cards into tablet form to where you can play games on the computer, and 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 that board games are becoming more digitalized. What is coming in this industry that 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 is that gives you that they get it, that they know it's time to change. The only thing I see coming is the end. Wow. I don't mean to be so Bleak. I don't mean to be a downer about it, but a lot of the manufacturers have been bought and sold over the years. And a lot of them are nothing but bean counters now. Okay. So games workshop, take note. You're, the, you were part of the problem. They don't look past, um, you know, their checkbook, uh, a lot of them don't really care about quality, so or uh, they don't care about people, you know, they don't care about putting out a quality product and marketing to her having a good time. They don't think back to when they were kids. Interesting. If they like, would think back to when they were kids, when they would go into the train store with dad or with grandpa and you know the excitement of getting that one train car that you wanted or that one slot car that you wanted or that one model that you really wanted kids don't do that today i really don't chris you're gonna have to take over that one hit me deep no i that's fair so it's funny because i actually watched a uh, documentary on netflix called the art of fun and it was the rise of funko and basically the way that company was started the owner made bobbleheads and it was something that he was stoked about because he loved all the old school uh mascots and stuff like that so that's basically what he started with and when you say um you know they don't give a shit about it like that does matter because uh, the funko guy showed it who the fuck cared about bobbleheads and then well i care about bobbleheads i'm a collector blah 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 so you start building this cult following almost and if these guys gave a shit about what they were doing and less about that that bottom dollar um well there hold on i'm totally cutting you off and i don't care what deal with it because what has caused the board game resurgence in in our industry in, in our hobby our our side of things is is not 
manufacturers. It's not because Fantasy Flight puts out good games. It's not because Descent. It's, you can't, it's not because Settlers just took off. Settlers have always been good. You have those independent companies doing the crowdsource, the funding. Like, that's honestly what has saved the board game industry. It's helped. But yeah. it's also... It's it, also it's a little more than that because people crave social interaction now. Do you think that that's something that 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 you know RCs, our slot cars, our model rockets, or the, the the traditional hobbies can embrace that crowd to some, ex, to some extent. Uh, the RC, I mean, the RC industry will be fine. Uh, it comes and goes where it's for the masses or that select few, but it will always be around. I mean, I, okay. So the RC industry, uh, I see, is pretty much okay all on its own for it, right it's now. It's the the plastic models. I, I know trains are pretty much. The, yeah. They're they're dying out because the manufacturers are just charging way too much money. Okay, and what about um, the what, other? What it's going to take for something like that is it might take that that industry basically dying off, and it's going to take some guy in his basement that's like, oh, I've got this little electric motor and this train model. I'll, I'll make this, and then he'll start mass producing that shit, and then it'll get a following again because he cares. Mm-hmm. And I think I think that's a, a back to what he had said. Nobody gives a shit, and if you give a shit, you're going to turn out things that show that you give a shit. All it takes is to care, you know. It's, it's not rocket science. Well, no, that's, that's hanging funny. up on the wall. That's right. Yeah, we made the same it. joke right there. <laughs> so, guys, if you're in Overland, are you in the St. Louis area, coming from Florida, California, you see we got new listeners in New Mexico? I wasn't even paying attention. Yeah, we got... Hey, New Mexico! Oh, I love New Mexico. Good friend of mine, Gail, out in Taos. That's probably who listens. That's... We're going to say... Because there's only like four of them. But we'll say we'll say it's Gail. <laughs> love New Mexico. Well, New Mexico was that... It was like the last state that we One could of. pick up. Yeah, um, yeah. We're, we actually officially have listeners in all 50, all 50 states now. Even Alaska, which but, barely counts. You know what's funny, though, is we've had... A global audience since we started, which yeah. is bizarre. Well, a lot of it was Russian hackers and that ed- Egyptian prince. Yeah, I mean, we, that we've also had, you know, Japan, all, all England, France. If you guys across across this wonderful nation slash world are find yourself in fifteen minutes from the airport. Because that's where it's located. We're 15 yeah, minutes from, from the air, from, from Lambert Airport. Actually, it's not even 15 minutes. you got to account for road work and traffic. Even at that, it's not 15 it's minutes. It's fucking close, people. <laughs> okay, it's, it's close. We're two and a half miles. Yeah, come come by. Say hi. Uh, Bill and Dennis, they got their dogs here normally. Uh, this is one of the last stands for the old-fashioned hobby. Well, I mean, this slot track would blow your fucking mind. Would you? So, if somebody came in here just off the street and was like, "Could you show me this?" Oh, we do it all the time. So you, you'll demo that. We that demo the track. Let them run on it. Let them play there. with it. God. Yeah, they, they have my little. They, one of my slot cars is here. That's amazing. And if anybody is interested, I'm gonna I'm gonna plug the store for right now. Do it. Um, uh, if you like North Central Hobbies on Facebook, we broadcast the racing live. Every on Friday, Friday night. nights. That's amazing. They do. Also on Wednesdays, uh, we broadcast the league. We're Actually, the league for adults. Watch Friday nights for about like five minutes. Yeah. And then I'm like, right, I gotta go back to work. That's awesome. But that, yeah. Um, yeah, if you really don't know somebody, you know, you're not gonna watch more than a couple minutes. But, but it's fun to see. Like, it gives you that, that, that view. Like, on, and what's the address? 9630 Lackland Road, Overland, Missouri. And is there a website that they can go to? www.nchobby.net See, I'm better promoting this place than I am my own fucking yes. show. Yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll promote our yeah. show, though. I got oh, hold on, one. hold on. When's Free RPG Day? Free RPG Day is, uh, I don't know. Oh, God. I, is it, come on, man. Is, isn't it next Saturday? Am I, you work free, at the store! Shut up. It, yeah, Free RPG Day is bigger than that store. Um, Google that shit. You talk while I Google. So, Promote, get, get, wrap this up. Basically, uh, we are giving away a bunch of copies of Merle's Truck Stop in Maine at Free RPG Day. I have already sent them over to the folks at Miniature Market, so they are going to be pushing that very, very, uh, very hard for you guys. So go there, get your free copy of Merle's Truck Stop. You'll be pretty stoked. Also, um, while we wait for Roger to pull this up. You, yeah, you go. Good? Okay. Keep going. Go to entertainthegeeky.com. It's there that you can find all of our social media, and you can read a couple of fun articles about different things in the hobby and in just our industry and what we do, what we care about. Um, Also, check out our sponsor at HeroicGearStore.com. They've got goods for geeks on the go. What's up? What you got? June 16th. June 16th. That's like in two weeks, dude. That's close. In two weeks, I'll be running the game for free RPG day. There you go. We'll talk about that later, though. Actually, Uh, that's next 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 Saturday. That's next Saturday. You were 
always never good at math. Hold on, but look, it's right there. I have it in my phone. All right, so next yeah. Saturday, you guys can go to the Miniature Market Superstore and have Roger from Entertain the Geeky run an RPG for you. Uh, D&D 5th edition, because it's easy. D&D 5e, or you could run Rolls Truck Stop if you really wanted to. I've already, I've already committed oh, to 5e. Oh, you've already got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but you can hand people copies of Rolls Truck Of course Truck I will. Stop. And I'll, hey. I'll be there just hanging out. A big a shout time. Thank you, Bill, for coming on. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It, it was an awesome, awesome show. Chris, did fun. you learn anything? Yeah. Yeah? Models are dead. <laughs> yeah. He learned not to open a hobby shop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Guys, that's your, that's your line, not my line. Yeah. Do you have any words of wisdom that you'd like to part us with? Don't invest in a hobby shop. Support your local hobby shop. Pull your head out of your ass and have fun. And as always... Stay geeky. Man, that was a downer.